Welcome all. Our statement reads, find the magnetic vector potential of a finite segment of straight wire carrying a current I. Put the wire on the z-axis from z1 to z2 and use the integral formulation. Check that your answer is consistent with the Bios of Art result. All right, so let's draw it out. We're on the z-axis, so that means dl equal dz. And from our some random point in space s and uh, separation distance script r, we have z1 and z2 as far as the initial distance and ending distance. All right, so things to know. The magnetic vector potential, as it's written in the integral form, is A equal mu naught over 4 pi integral vector I over script R DL prime, or transfer the vector direction to the differential element. And then the magnetic field of a line was B equal mu naught I 4 pi S sine theta 2 minus sine theta 1. All right, moving forward. So first, let's set up the uh, integral and evaluate. Uh, we know that since we're in the z direction, or on the z axis, we can have we're in the z direction, and the current is constant. So that's i z hat over script r dz. Now script r, as you see, is a little triangle, and we have the hypotenuse. So we have z squared plus s squared or to the square root. And uh, again, we've seen this formulation before. And again, start point Z1, end point Z2, DZ in the Z hat direction. That's a simple integral to evaluate. This is the natural log. We've seen that before in electrostatics. Uh, take the evaluation. And because we're dealing with logs, that's minus, which is the same as dividing. And that's why you have a fraction in the natural log. Next, let's verify this magnetic potential is indeed the potential we want to find the straight line segment magnetic field. So to find a magnetic field, B is equal to del cross A. In this case, since we're only in one direction, the z-hat direction, we need negative uh, partial A with respect to S in the phi-hat direction. Okay, and that was given by the right-hand rule, by the way. So, uh... Let's plug this in and evaluate. We got negative mu naught i over 4 pi, uh, derivative of the first part of that, the ln, and then uh, do the chain rule on the square root, and then minus because we have a quotient. Um, simplify that through. Uh, you notice in the second line of math, we multiply through the uh, denominator to rationalize it. So we multiply by z uh, z2 minus square root, and that's how we end up with the cancellations there. We've seen that before in algebra and again in calculus with limits, things of that nature. Um, so nonetheless, the z and the denominators cancel in both cases, and thus we're left with this uh, fraction with two parts in the numerator. Um, notice that after the cancellations, we have a negative s squared in, in the denominator of both. So we factor that out in the next line. And then we split up the fractions. So we have z minus 2 or z uh, sub 2 minus square root z2 squared plus s squared. But that's the same as what's in the denominator. So it cancels to negative 1. Similarly, on the other side, cancels to minus negative 1. So positive 1. And the 1s cancel leaving us with mu naught i over 4 pi s, not s squared, since s in the numerator cancels with the s squared in the denominator. Um, this looks fine and all, looks familiar, but let's write this in terms of what our geometry gives us. And if you remember from our geometry, we had a triangle, and we know that the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so we can put z1 over script r, and then z2 over script r for theta 1 and theta 2. And thus, we're, and thus after the substitution, we see that the uh, this actually is the magnetic field of the line, mu naught i over 4 pi s times sine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 in the fiat direction. Confirmed.